Hello everybody, it's uh, Road Safety Week here in Queensland and uh, I'm joined today by Ben Marcus, my friend and colleague from Queensland Police Service and Assistant Commissioner who's been working with us for a long time on road safety issue and Andrew Marne, General Manager of Land Transport Safety and Regulation who is leading uh, the policy in terms of keeping Queensland as safe on our roads. And this week is Road Safety Week, hence the yellow tie instead of my normal Indigenous tie and my yellow badge, because uh, it's really important that we actually get people to think about road safety, because road safety is everybody's responsibility. Uh, unfortunately, as we uh, record this, uh, the lives lost is at 193, but that's not the full story. There's probably five or 6,000 people that's been seriously injured on our roads as well, and, and one death is, is one death too many. So I've got my colleagues here just to tell, tell you what we're trying to do with, uh, with Road Safety Week and to emphasise that uh, it's not just a fatal five, it's all sorts of other things. So over to Andrew, so how do you think we can actually start making a dent in the, in the road safety side for, say, the next 10 years? Well, thanks, DG. And look, over the next 10 years, we've got our road safety strategy and our first road safety action plan over the next three. And what we're aiming to do is achieve a 50% reduction in fatalities and a 30% reduction in serious injuries over that time. Now that's a big goal. That's something that's gonna be difficult for us to achieve, but every single thing we do, whether it's building infrastructure, whether it's road safety policy and legislation, whether it's enforcement, whatever we do, we need to make sure that we're doing everything we can to save people's lives. And what's really important and in a week like this in Road Safety Week is making sure that everyone thinks about what they can do personally to make a difference. Great. and. Uh I want to bring Ben in now because when people think of road safety, they tend to think about the police. And unfortunately, when I hear those words, the forensic crash unit, you know, my, my heart always sinks because it means that something bad's really happened. So over to you, Ben. Um, how does the important work done by yourself and also the QPS actually fit into what Andrew's just said? Oh, look, thank you, sir. Um, the police really have three main areas and you, you spoke about the forensic crash. So every time there is a, uh, a serious or fatal uh, traffic crash, anywhere in Queensland. On behalf of the coroner, we go through and we work out exactly what has occurred. Um, I know you mentioned the fatal five before. They, they still one or more of the fatal five are represented in uh, over 70% of fatal crashes. Um, absolutely belies belief some of the things that we see at times. People in otherwise survivable crashes, they don't wear a seatbelt and they die. Um, we, we will find uh, vehicle crashes all the time where the three people in the, in the vehicle wearing their seatbelt walk away effectively unharmed and the one person who decides not to wear their seatbelt for whatever reason is unfortunately killed. Uh, the other thing that um, that we play a big part in also unfortunately for our, our people is the enforcement side where we have to be the bad guys and uh, take money and points off, off people's so demerit point system uh, when we don't believe that um, us giving them a caution or a warning will be effective. And the other big thing for us really is in the preventative side. Um, we, we have moved away somewhat from the mega high visibility policing because what we find unfortunately is some people will slow down when they see a police car or a speed camera and then they speed up. So we have to get a little bit more crafty with what we do. Um, so we've got a lot more of an unmarked and covert uh, fleet as well. And the, on the preventive side too, we, we're very invested in programs like the PCYC um, breaking the cycle. Um, we've got some really innovative stuff. Um, our partnership with DTMR is, is invaluable for us. And some of the ideas that have been generated out of that, and I can't, I can't reveal them yet because we'll drip feed them out through Road Safety Week, but some of those things are the, are the envy of the, uh, of the relationship across Australasia. Yeah, I think we're doing really well, but as part of Road Safety Week, uh, Marcus, how do you think you know, what you're doing and what we're doing, how do you think it's going to actually benefit Queenslanders? Because, um, you know, it seem, seems to me anyway, no matter what we do, there's, there's always that, that cohort of people that just don't seem to take any notice. Yeah, so I, I guess if you look back right from the early 1970s uh, through to today, we have had a significant trend in a reduction of the number of lives lost um, over that period. So I have that sense of optimism that as vehicle technology improves, um, we will find safer uh, roads and safer outcomes. But yes, we do still have a group of people on the roads um, who are impatient, who are rude, um, 
we have criminals that operate out of motor vehicles uh, and we're obviously we're the primary combatant agency for that um, but there's also some some just fundamental changes to the way we use our roads after COVID, the way we spend our consumable income um, as a result of COVID. A lot more people on motorcycles now, a lot more caravans, a lot more camper vans, a lot of people are driving for holidays rather than we used to fly. And we also have an ageing population. Uh, the baby boomers are all in retirement now and they're off with their ski holidays, they're spending the kids' inheritance um, uh, holidays. And unfortunately for that group, uh, if they do have a crash, they are more susceptible to uh, injury. Um, so one of the things that we're doing uh, with our emergency per uh, services partners is a greater aer aeromedical retrieval. So sending a helicopter instead of an ambulance to try and reduce that uh, time frame. Um, but I hate to say it, you know, if, if you're out in a vehicle and um, you're doing the wrong thing, it's a matter of time before we take your licence off you. Yeah, obviously you want people to do the right thing and we're using uh, new technology to uh, best effect and we're always trying to um, weld what we're doing with new technology towards our road safety message. Andrew, would you just like to tell people what we're doing on the, on the technology side and how we're advancing and just trying to keep ahead of, of the curve on that? Yeah, absolutely. So the obvious ones we've got in place now is a technology we use around enforcement. So our mobile phone and seatbelt cameras are really effective. Uh, we're unfortunately finding a lot of people doing the wrong thing when they go through these cameras. So people not wearing their seatbelts or not wearing them properly. Uh, people using mobile phones. But we want to look at technology into the future around how we can change the way we do things that aren't just enforcement, that are also educational, that are also uh, going to nudge people to do the right thing. And that at the moment, over uh, the next year, we look, we're hoping to, to test technology that will help nudge uh, behaviour change on people, whether that's mobile phones, seatbelts or other types of offences, where you may not get a ticket, but you may get an alert that tells you that you're doing the wrong thing and gets you to correct your behaviour. Uh, we're looking at technology around drug driving. How are we going to combat the issue of drug driving? And that's becoming a bigger problem for us, uh, particularly with uh, uh, different types of drugs being used in the community, but also medicinal drugs. So we want to make sure that we're doing everything we can in the technology space to improve that as well. Um, but even just the technology that goes into the way we design roads and, and safer infrastructure, really important to make sure that everything we do as a department, as a government, that we're making sure that we, we are using the latest technology, using the best uh, method, uh, because ultimately people make mistakes on the roads. Um, they also do the wrong thing, but they often make mistakes. Uh, everyone's human. Um, and, and we want to make sure if you make a mistake that we reduce the risk of you having a serious injury or fatality um, and look at different ways of, of changing behaviour through our communications and campaigns, through our uh, social media networks, uh, everything we can do to make sure that we make a difference. Yeah, our viewers might not know, but, but we're using gaming technology on things like Prep L, which is the, um, the forerunner to doing the 100 hours for your kids or grandkids. Would you like to tell us a bit about that? Because that's quite an interesting development. Yeah, absolutely. So in, in late 2018, early 2019, we released Prep L, which is effectively the replacement for the old 30 question learner license test people used to do in our customer service centres. This program takes around four hours for young drivers to go through, but it uses gaming technology and uses a whole range of approaches to make sure that we can educate not only the rules, but also the road safety components that young people need to understand and learn. Um, it is a world first and, uh, and an Australian first, and we're seeing other states now start to pick it up and use it and adopt it, which is fantastic to see. And in addition to that, we've added Prep L Supervisor, which is to help mums and dads uh, or any other supervisor that wants to educate their, their kids and educate themselves on how to be a good supervisor. So we're building a suite of uh, technology platforms that will help into the future. Yeah, because people will say to us, well, oh, well, if the mum and dad's help them, surely that's given the, you know, the learner driver, the prospective learner driver a leg up. Well, we don't mind, actually, because what it's doing is correcting mm. bad behaviour yep. in the parents, and yep. we think that that's a good thing. So we've heard about, um, from the police, the enforcement side, we've heard about the technology side, but I've got Andrew first and then Ben. Where do you think we should go in the next 10 years? Because uh, the targets you outlined, in particular Andrew right at the start, are pretty hard targets. But, you know, one life, in my view, is, is, is too much to lose. So yep. uh, just ask you first, Andrew, then you, Ben, where do you think it's all going and, you know, how, how our viewers can help? Because it's, it's everybody's responsibility, really. Absolutely. And look, over the next 10 years, 
Uh, I think that the key focus for us is how do we get into communities more? How do we get people into the workplace more? How do we get road safety into those avenues and those opportunities that we perhaps haven't had, haven't been able to in the past? So that if you work for a company, you work for a business, whatever the case might be, that perhaps some of uh, the training you get when you start a job is around how to drive safely and work vehicles and so forth, something simple like that. But it's really about getting down to that grassroots level of into the community and making sure that road safety is a discussion that everyone's having and, and lots of people are having, whether it's at the local sporting group and, and you'll see that we're very engaged with Queensland cricket and AFL and other community uh, uh, sporting groups because we want to make sure that we make this a discussion that people are having all the time. So I think that's the key thing over the next 10 years is to make it a normal discussion and something that help people call out their friends and, and colleagues and, and family if they're not doing the right thing, um, thinking about safety all the time. Uh, and I think that will help make a big difference. I think that's right. And if you look at our, our stuff that we put out in the broadcast media, we've gone away from doom and gloom and people are getting smashed up on you know, on the TV and gone more for, you know, like Mates Motel and, you know, doing the right thing, not the wrong thing. But how do you see it going, Ben? The answer I'm supposed to give you is that it's everybody's responsibility. Um, but in support of what Andrew said, I, I just think as a society, we've got to stop allowing 193 people so far today to die. And we, we, uh, we always say every day people die on the roads every day. Um, none of us are immune from this. Having said that, um, some, of the, some of the ideas that have been generated by people other than the three of us um, are brilliant. There's an idea that Queensland DTMR came up with called Hold the Red, which is a piece of technology that the rest of the world is looking at at the moment going, why the hell didn't someone think of that earlier? It is such a, a simple, cost-effective way of technology making allowances for human behaviour. But in the end, it is human behaviour. So all of our, the TORM, so the, the, the road use manu manual that we all refer to, is a series of rules based around, if I follow the rules and you follow the rules, we can't actually have a crash. Um, most of the crashes that I see come down to a momentary lapse, inattention, or um, people just trying to get one vehicle ahead of where they are on the road only to stop at the traffic lights further up. So we need to be good citizens on the road and we need to be more polite and we need to be more forgiving of other road users and their indiscretions because it ultimately comes down to when you're in the car and you're in control of a steering wheel, you've got a one tonne weapon in your hands, whether you realise that or not. Um, and if we, if we just had a little bit more sense around the fact that when things go wrong, in a car or on a motorbike or in a truck, the outcomes are absolutely devastating and completely out of, out of um, all context with what we want to do as, as citizens of Australia. When you're a citizen of the road, you just have to pay more attention and you have to take more care. But I would welcome any ideas from anybody within the department or anybody watching this. If you've got a really good road safety idea, don't keep it to yourself share it, plug it, market it, do whatever you have to do because, you know, 25 million people in Australia, hopefully the next 10, 15, 20 life-saving ideas will come from one of them. Absolutely. So we haven't got a monopoly on, on great ideas. So any ideas anybody's got, uh, you know, gratefully received. And I've got to say as well, people say, oh, this is just a revenue generating thing. And, you know, I've heard my colleagues in the police say, well, if you don't transgress, you don't get pinged. But the revenue, got to make this point, it's uh, what we call hypothecated. So it can only go into road safety measures. So it doesn't go into any of the budgets. So in other words, I'd rather not have it. I'd rather not have that revenue stream because that means everybody was doing the right thing. But I think what we've tried to do this morning, just said what we're trying to do as partners, and we're closer to the police than any other the 22 bits of uh, Queensland government. We are acting in concert. And, you know, one life lost on the road is one too many. So please think about what you're doing, pass the message on, and together we'll try and beat this thing. So thanks very much.